Hi everyone, my name is Hi everyone, my name is Barry Mulvey. I'm from Imperial College London and today I'll be presenting on Deformabot, a bio-inspired deformable mobile robot for navigation among obstacles, work which I did with uh, Felina Lilitharatne and Trishanta Naniyakara. So navigation around movable or compliance compliant obstacles results in a loss of efficiency and possible mission failure compared to progression through them. Uh, in this work, we propose the design of a deformable mobile robot called Deformobot. Uh, the ability of animals, like cats, to morph their shape to traverse spaces smaller than their natural body states is the bio-inspiration for the design of our work. So these animals can move in cluttered environments, uh, conforming their shape to geometric constraints, but most robots are rigid and don't possess these capabilities. So our robot can adopt a wider shape for greater stability and possible higher payload capability, uh, or a narrowish stance to become capable of fitting through these narrow apertures. So the specific contributions of this work are the design of Deformobot, the development of a shape adjustment algorithm in response to proprioceptive feedback, and the real-time estimation of the optimal robot body shape for traversing obstacles and fitting through narrow apertures. Our robot design has a hexagonal shape, which is robust and strong under compression. A linear guide rail acts as its spine, and bio-inspired spring-loaded whiskers are attached to its front tip. The robot body uh, aims to mimic the transversal contraction of the cat, and it can change from a regular hexagonal shape to an elongated rhombus about two-thirds of its original width. So we derive expressions for the robot's measurements given its angle of deformation, which is directly influenced by the servo angle. And applying geometric properties, we can derive the robot's angle of deformation, which can be used to calculate its width. The servo is placed to enable the greatest range of movement of the robot uh, for the two-bar linkage, and we set this to be equal. So our proposed robot control node takes feedback from the position to shape mapper and a shape controller and communicates with the motion controller and position to shape mapper, or PSM. A magnetic encoder at the tip of the whiskers uh, communicates deformation measurements to an onboard Arduino Uno. And motor-driven rimless wheels at the front of the robot provide traction and grip on unstructured environments, while passive omnidirectional wheels at the back assist with its shape-changing ability. Uh, so the wheels and servo are powered by LiPo batteries, and it's a single servo to control the entire robot body shape. So our, uh, the overlap of the comparison between the kinematic analysis and our experimental measurements demonstrates good fit, and our proposed PSM model compares the relationships between the different angles, which can be modeled as quadratic polynomials. We present an, al an algorithm for obstacle traversal, which takes account of both the whisker angle and the robot body shape. And the quadratic polynomial from the PSM, which is highlighted in red, uses hand-tuned coefficients to couple the whisker and desired body shape, which should be complementary to elicit meaningful behaviors. So if you have um, perception that's overly sensitive, uh, it leads to an overcompensation of the body, while perception that's too coarse, the robot would struggle to fit through gaps. And we conducted experiments to observe how the robot interacts with different obstacles. So here we tested boxes, cushions, clothes, and stones to provide a range of different physical properties. We placed these obstacles uh, apart closer than the narrowest possible width of the robot and tested it from different approach angles, 90, 60, and 30 degrees. And smaller angles are more challenging since the gap is tighter. So you can see that the robot adjusts its body shape as much as it needs to traverse the obstacles. Where it can push away the lighter obstacles, it does not need to compress its shape as much. And where the obstacles are heavier or immovable, it has to compress itself fully in order to progress through. So in all but one of the cases, the robot achieved 100% success rate of traversal. And in the single other case, which was stone blocks at 30 degree approach angle, it achieved a 60% success rate. Um, so yeah, the box plot shows summary statistics of the robot across its different trials. So the servo angle is reactive to the whisker in real time, apart from a rewidening delay, so that the robot does not become stuck. Um, heavier obstacles result in steeper gradients, 
And you can see here that the quadratic relationship between the whisker and servo angle changes in the lower plots um, is as expected. But in future work, it'll be interesting to explore the uh, benefits of marginal gains uh, by adding more degrees of freedom and more sensing modalities. So in conclusion, we presented Deformobot, a novel bio-inspired deformable mobile robot. Uh, enabling the robot to adapt its body shape allows it to successfully traverse obstacles and fit through narrow gaps, smaller than its natural shape. And our results highlight the importance of the co-development of environment perception and physical reaction capabilities. And these capabilities can facilitate improved perception and proficiency of robots resulting in their ability to navigate efficiently and effectively, particularly in unstructured environments. Thank you very much for your attention. I'd be, I'd be really happy to answer any questions that you might have now or during the poster session. itself is spring-loaded and it's, it's passive, so it wants to return to a specific shape. So we can measure the amount of deformation that there is to the to the whisker in, in real time. That information is sent back to an Arduino and there's we've, we've made an algorithm that runs on the Arduino that takes account for the whisker deformation and the robot body shape. So the robot body shape itself is active and can, can update in real time to that. Yeah, so um, right now, I mean, we, we didn't test that scenario. Um, we did test, uh, you know, pathways where the width can vary and the robot updates as it progresses through. But yeah, I think this, this could be interesting to explore as future work. Thanks very much.